Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. That's right, Revelation, going through the entire book, the entire book of Revelation. But we're not too far. We're only in Revelation chapter 5 right now. And of course, you're more than welcome to go back and watch the previous videos. You can watch them in any order you like, or you can just start right here with us. The whole idea is we're just going slow, taking Revelation in little tiny short bites so that we don't get overwhelmed uh, when we read and so that we don't read too much at a time and then we just uh, end up forgetting the things that we learned. Of course, we're trying to find little fun ways to apply the things we learn, things we read uh, to our own lives and uh, you're more than welcome to read along uh, with your Bibles at home. Uh, we've been in the throne room. That's where we are right now. Uh, John is receiving a vision from heaven. He is in the throne room of God. Incredible. And you think about John's life. You know, John lives at a time where it feels like things are just getting worse and worse and worse, right? Every day it feels like the Christians are being persecuted more and more from Rome and that they just really are looking forward to a savior, some rescuing, a release. And, um, John is in the throne room and I believe he has these, you know, these questions, you know, when, when are the end times? When is Jesus coming back? Who can save the church? In verse eight, it says, when the lamb had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp, the golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. You know, last week we talked about how the elders fall down and they worship Jesus. Jesus is the lamb and he alone is worthy to take the scroll, the deed of the earth. He is the rightful heir of the earth. And so the, um, the elders fall down and as they fall down, they have these golden bowls full of incense, which John describes as being our prayers. You know, you think about what incense is. Incense is something that is like perfume, something that is sweet smelling. You know, the revelation, um, mentions here that our prayers, right? Our prayers to God are sweet smelling. Well, that mirrors something that shows up in the Old Testament. Go read uh, Psalm 141 verse 2. Psalm 141 verse 2 also says that our prayers are like incense to God. It's a sweet fragrance that our prayers are received like that to God. That that's how God thinks about our prayers. That's awesome. So the lamb takes the scroll that nobody can open. The 24 elders fall down. And then what do they do? They worship. They sing. Verses 9 and 10 say, They sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, right? So this is Jesus. And by your blood, you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom of priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. You know, sometimes people wonder, like, why do we sing in church? Like, why do we sing? Like, I get maybe the sermon and the fellowship, but why do we sing? I don't sing anywhere else in my life. I don't sing, you know, at the grocery store. I don't sing at work. Well, we sing in church because they sing in heaven. And in the Lord's Prayer, we pray that we do things on earth as it is in heaven. So we sing because they sing in heaven. What are they singing? Well, they're singing a message that God loves the world, right? That he sent his son to die for the world. They're singing a song of the gospel, really. And that they, and they say specifically that the world is every tribe, every language, people, nation, right? So that's basically everybody, right? <laughs> that's everybody. There is no prejudice in Christianity. I feel like I need to say that again. There's no prejudice in Christianity. Christians are not racist. Christians are not racist. God died for every person. And that, you know, that hasn't been uh, always the case with the church. The church has had a mixed message in the past. I can remember when um, even the Mormon church up until the early 70s didn't allow uh, black people into the priesthood. But that's not biblical. It clearly says that Jesus died for every tribe, 
every language, every people, every nation. So the cross is for everyone. It's for all nations of the world. There's no discrimination. And I know when I say it out loud, it, it sounds like, well, sure, of course. You know, it sounds like common sense, but I think we need to reinforce this message. Verse 10 also says that we aren't just a kingdom, but we're a kingdom of priests. And this is a hugely important idea for uh, me and for our church here in Walden, because this is something I try to communicate. This, I'm a pastor, okay? I'm a pastor, and pastor is just another word for shepherd. So I shepherd the church here in Montgomery, Texas. But you, you are a priest. You have a pastor, they, they shepherd your church, but you, according to the Bible, are a priest. And you say, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not a priest. The Bible says you're a priest. And so who are we to question or doubt who the Bible says that we are? We are a priest. You know, you stand as the representative for God in the world. In other words, when the world looks at you, they should see a representation of the faith. That's what a priest is. That's what you are. And the second thing is that a priest has intimacy with God. It used to be that you'd had to go to the priest and the priest would intercede for you. You know, you'd confess to the priest or you'd uh, talk to the priest and then the priest would go and, and talk to God. But now that intimacy is given to you. As a priest, you have intimacy with God. Your, your pastor or, or someone else does not need to intervene between you and God, and nobody needs to hear your prayers besides God. No one needs to hear your confessions besides God. You have direct access to the creator of the universe because of the cross, because of the Son. And I know as a Christian, uh, I'm called to be part of this priesthood of all believers. But being part of that, okay, and listen, listen carefully. Being part of the priesthood of all believers is more than just going to church, saying a prayer before dinner, reading my Bible, and perhaps sharing the gospel every now and then. Being a part of the kingdom of believers, this, this priesthood of all believers, is, is a huge uh, responsibility and something that we shouldn't take lightly. When you think about the roles of a priest, that those are now... Uh, our responsibilities. I think the, the first one that comes to mind is service. You know, we should be serving. I think whenever someone ever asks me, you know, hey, what's the next step? What's my next step in my faith? Like I've accepted Christ, I've joined a church, now what should I do? You should serve. Serving is really where the pedal hits the metal. It's where the dirt hits the road. It's where you and I become shaped as disciples, we serve someone else. We serve. Second, we should live a life that's set apart. What does that mean? Well, I mean, the scriptures talk about not being conformed to this world. Somebody should be able to look at you and say, absolutely, their character says that they're a Christian. Their language, the words that come out of their mouth, the jokes they tell, tell me, nope. You know what? They're a Christian. The way they raise their children, the way they spend their money, the way they carry themselves, all of those things are, are you saying, I'm a Christian. Now, I'm not saying that you're saved by any of these things. You're not saved by what you do. Okay, These, these things don't save us. But as a priest, you are called to live a set-apart life, a holy life. Again, as a priest, you are a representation of the faith that you follow. Someone should be able to look at you and say, yes, this is what a Christian looks like. This is what Jesus looks like. And then last, I think we need to spend more time in the presence of God. You know, that was what the role of the priest was, was to spend time with God. And the reason why we went to a priest was because we felt like they had a closer connection with God than I did. Well, nothing is stopping you from having a close relationship with God. And I would say, spend time in God's presence. How do you do that? Pray more. 
Worship more. Read your scriptures more. And again, these things don't save you. We're not saved by them. God's not checking off a a good list and a bad list of people who do these things and don't. I'm saying if we are to take our role as a member of the priesthood of all believers uh, seriously, then we're going to say, yes, you know what my job? My job is to serve others. My job is to live a holy and set apart life. And my job is to spend more time in the presence of God. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.